warning from scientists suggesting the Earth may be on the verge of another mass extinction, similar, similar to the one that killed the dinosaurs. It happened five times in the past 540 million years, but this time around, experts say we may be able to stop it. Michio Kaku is a physics professor at City University of New York and author of the new book, Physics of the Future, that we're going to be looking forward to the new book, of course. Mm -hmm. All right, Dr. Kaku, getting right to it, so which species would be most at risk? Well, so far, if you analyze the last few hundred years of life on the Earth, human activity apparently has wiped out 1.4% of all plant and animal species, and it is 100 to 1,000 times faster than normal because of human population, uh, development, pollution, over-harvesting. And if you take a look at a zoo, uh, many of the zoo animals that our children love, mm -hmm we may find them going extinct. Uh, the tiger, for example, uh, may go extinct. Many of the familiar zoo animals, bears, and realize that 18,000 species are at risk. And what about climate control? How does that, what role does it play? Yeah, climate change is also involved in this thing. Independent of where climate change comes from, right. we see that the seasons are changing. Summers are getting longer. Uh, winters are getting shorter on average. And we always say that the early bird catches the worm, but that assumes that the worm and the bird are synchronized. Uh -huh. Many of these cycles, the natural cycles, are being thrown into disarray, meaning, for example, droughts in China going on right now, yeah. uh, perhaps famine in certain areas. So we humans cannot be divorced from what's happening in the natural world. We can't div be divorced. Is it something we can do about it? I guess you said pollution is one thing we can do. Um, but so what happens, doctor, if there is not this sort of scientific pruning? Would the, would the earth be overrun? with all sorts of creatures? Well, evolution says survival of the fittest, and so mm -hmm. far we humans are among the fittest. But we are also at the top of the food chain, the top of the okay. pyramid, and it wouldn't take much to dislodge us from being at the top of the food chain. So who could uh, outrank us at that top of the food chain? <laughs> you know what, what animals they need to look out for. Well, in science fiction, of course, uh, the insects take over. But look at something very simple. Uh, we are dependent on just a few crops, uh, wheat, rice, um, and if just a few crops, and if a blight were to wipe out these crops, then a huge chunk of humanity would starve to death because yes. we're so dependent on just a few plants and animals for our existence. So should we expand our menu, so to speak, or is there something else that the earth provides that we should be looking at? We for should food? be wary of over-harvesting. For example, over-harvesting the oceans. Uh, we have drag nets, which in principle could drag the entire oceans. That's how efficient our technology is. Also, wheat production we have to worry about because water, water is the key to wheat production and they're going to be perhaps water wars in the future. And are with you concerned flooding about area. that water wars and that we may run out of water? Well, there will always be water on the earth. The question is the cost and what it would take to extract it, to desalinate it, to divert it, to irrigate. And so the cost of certain kinds of commodities could start to rise. So just because we're the, at the top of the right. food chain doesn't mean that we're invulnerable to what's happening outside yeah. where bio biodiversity is being threatened. You, you mentioned, we have to go, but you mentioned insects could overrun the earth. Well, that's is in that, science fiction. Yeah, but the cockroaches, they never seem to go away, doctor. We've got to figure out a way to get rid of them. Mm -hmm. All right, Dr. Michio Kaku, thank you so much. And the, your new book we're looking out for is Physics of the Future. Yellowstone in northwest Wyoming, land of geysers, mountains, and lakes, is also sitting atop a super volcano. And it just took what scientists describe as a deep breath, causing miles of ground to rise dramatically. So what does this mean? Well, joining us right now is Michio Kaku. He is a physics professor at the City University of New York and the author of the upcoming book, Physics of the Future, thanks so much for joining us. Glad to be on. So, so um, the last time this happened was 640,000 years ago. We're due? We are due. Forget Yogi Bear. Okay, forget Old Faithful. It's on sitting on top of a sleeping giant. Now, if you're sleeping next to an 800-pound gorilla, you monitor every burp, every snore of this gigantic gorilla because when it blows, it could destroy the United States as we know it. This is a, a pretty scary prospect. I want to just show people what we're talking about here when we talk about this super volcano. And we have a little uh, 
thing to show you a map with some of the details. So that's where it is. It's um, under, beneath Yellowstone. It's been there, as we know. I guess this has erupted three times in 2.1 mil, million years. Uh, but what they're worried about is the fact that they say that the ground has started to swell in levels that they have not seen before, 10 inches in some places in the past year. What does that tell us? It tells us that there is activity in this supervolcano, which erupts roughly every 600 million years. And the last eruption was 640 million years ago. Oh, 640 million or 1,000? 1,000 uh, years okay, ago. I'm okay. sorry. Because right. then we had some more time. <laughs> then we had some more time, right. But that's what's making us very nervous, because the cycle time corresponds to the present-day era. So every single burp, murmur of this gigantic potential supervolcano, including the rise of the sea level, has to be watched very carefully. All right, so when we talk about this, and we have pictures, uh, we have, uh, pictures of Mount St. Helen erupting back in 1980. Let's just show this right now. You say that an explosion with this supervolcano under Yellowstone, and there we're seeing the Mount St. Helens, would be a thousand times bigger than this. What type of damage are we talking about here? We're talking about immediate damage out to 100 miles from the site that is total devastation, basically wiping out everything in sight. However, the real damage goes out to 500 miles, if you include volcanic ash, poisonous gases, death of wildlife and vegetation, and that's a ring about a thousand miles across. That's yeah, the heart line of America. Uh, it, it would pretty much wipe out Earth as we know it? It would wipe out the United States as we know it. And again, we don't want to panic anybody. It could happen tomorrow or it could happen a hundred thousand years from now. It's black magic trying to predict exactly when it's going to blow, but we do know one thing. One day, it will blow. So, and you say that something on this scale is what wiped out the dinosaurs. 65 million years ago, another supervolcano coincided with this meteor that hit Mexico, and we think it was a double whammy that knocked out the dinosaurs. So it's something that we take very seriously, but again, the cycle time is measured on the scale of hundreds of thousands of years. Would there be anything we could do to prepare or to get people out? I mean, how much of a warning might we get with this eruption? All you can do is run. You don't get much warning. What happened is the, the ground starts to rise, more and more earthquakes take place, more ash and volcanic gases start to be unleashed. That's about the only warning we get, because we do not have a good way to predict volcanic eruptions. Are we getting a better way to do it, or are we just at the mercy of Mother Nature? We're still clueless. Uh, we're still monitoring it very carefully, looking for the warning signs. That's why this sudden rise in the earth, even though it's not immediately dangerous, is being looked at very carefully because we have no experience with supervolcanoes. We've seen Mount St. Helens, we've seen uh, Krakatoa, but a supervolcano erupting in our lifetime, we have no understanding of the scope of that thing. We just see the evidence of previous eruptions. It's amazing. So you say it could be tomorrow, it could be in 100,000 years, but it's under there. <laughs> it's there, and it will happen. At one point, it will destroy North America as we know it.